but so many factors are prohibiting. For example, I don't have health care in the USA and I don't want to be a burden on any temple. My travel insurance will not cover when there's a pandemic. So that's the catch. Wow. <laughs> Okay. So I have to wait for all these factors to adjust. <laughs> okay. And then I can get your association again, see the wonderful CNJ community preside over by Marupati Prabhu and all his associates. So just have to be patient. Thank you very much, Maharaj. Maharaj, <clears throat> please begin the class. So we'll, uh, everybody else will be put on mute. Maharaj can uh, do his katha on uh, <clears throat> Prahlad Narsinga. Yes. We had Narsinga Chatudasi during the week. And we had a yagya and wonderful virtual yagya. So now is the katha. Uh, so we're very fortunate. And then uh, following your class, we'll have question answers. Maharaj, if that's all right. All right. Okay. This my last. Om namo bhagavate vasudevaya. Om namo bhagavate vasudevaya. Om namo bhagavate vasudevaya. I'm speaking from New Zealand, outside of the city of Auckland. I'm at the Hare Krishna School the background there, the names of the students. <laughs> and I'm going to be speaking today predominantly from Brihad Bhagavatamrita, which amplifies Srimad Bhagavatam. It is Sanatana Goswami's further amplification of Srimad Bhagavatam. And so we have a wonderful BBT edition, uh, which I call the gold standard for all productions coming after Srila Prabhupada's time. And we also have Rupa Goswami, his Lago Bhagavatamrita, the BBT is also, has also done that. And so in order to establish the glories of Prahlad, I thought to take a deep dive into Narada Muni's quest for who is the dearest devotee. This is the basic framework of Brihad Bhagavatamrita. And we'll start with a verse from Srimad Bhagavatam. <clears throat> Bhavanti Purusha Loke Madbhakta Tam Anuvrata Bhavan Me Kalu Bhaktanam Sarvesham Pratirupa Drik. This is Lord Nishingadev speaking to Prahlad. He's saying, Those who follow your example will naturally become my pure devotees. You are the best example of my devotee and others should follow in your footsteps. So here you see Lord Nishingadev establishing the importance of Pallad Maharaj. You see, what is, what's, what's the scenario here? We're in the aftermath of Lord Nishinga's appearance. Many devotees like to focus on the actual execution, termination of Hiranyakashipu. And then there are the prayers, those famous prayers by Prahlad Maharaj for pacifying Lord Nishingadev. There are certain sections of Bhagavatam that Prabhupada spoke about more than others. And these prayers by Prahlad Maharaj are one of them. The other prayers by Queen Kunti and then the Ajamil section of the sixth canto. So, Let's focus, first of all, on the unlimited anger of Lord Nishingadev. Upon the termination of Haranikashipu, this anger, as perceived by the demigods, 
was a problem because it was like the anger at the time of universal annihilation. That's the only thing. That's the only thing that the demigods could compare it to. So first Brahma took his chance and he prayed that, oh my Lord, Duranta Shakti, your potencies are without end. Your potencies are inconceivable because Brahma was visualizing the whole situation from the time Jai and Vijay angered the four Kumaras until the time the four Kumaras cursed them. And then uh, Jai and Vijay took birth in the material world. And then Hiranyakashipu performs all these austerities and Brahma gives him these benedictions. And then Hiranyakashipu tortures his son, Prahlad. Brahma saw that the hand of the Supreme Personality of God it is in this. Not that there is no free will or interplay by the jivas, but in the background and as the Supreme Factor, Lord Brahma saw Duranta Shakti, the inconceivable potencies of the Lord. And so he basically, the Acharyas point out, said that, look, from within all these persons' heart, you as a super soul have inspired them, facilitated them, or permitted them to act in this way, all for your purposes. So that was Lord Brahma and his attempt. And then came Lord Shiva. He said, I know about this type of anger. It's the kind of anger that manifests at the for the cosmic annihilation. And I should, as Lord Shiva, especially know about that because I am your agent, my Lord. I'm your agent for destruction. But please, I beg you, now is not the time for such anger. Let's focus, Lord Shiva told Lord of Shingadev, let's focus on what's happening right at your feet. Your beloved Prahlad has prostrated himself at your feet. Let's think about that. Let's focus on that. <laughs> and then Indra made a, well, you might say a typical Indra appeal that thanks to you, Lord of Shingadev, we demigods have gotten our shares of the Yagya back. <laughs> So Indra expressed his gratitude for all that. So as you know, no one's prayers pacified Lord Nishingadev. It, the occasion was interplanetary. So many rishis, sages, residents of this planet, that planet offered their prayers. Mm. Finally, Lakshmi Devi had the last go. And she was overwhelmed by the Leela Shakti, the pastime potency of the Supreme Lord. So much so that she could not remember ever seeing Lord Nishingadev before. She said this wonderful form never, never before seen. But in a strict sense, that's not true for her. She has seen as Lakshmi Devi, she's seen Lord Nishingadev in Vaikuntha, and she's also seen him in a previous day of Lord Brahma. But she's overwhelmed by the Leela Shakti. So she says like that, uh, she could not pacify Lord Nishringadev. At that point, Lord Brahma realized there's only one option left. We have to push forward Prahlad. <laughs> and I like the way Srila Prabhupada explains it when he's lecturing. Brahma turns to Prahlad and said, Prahlad, this is on you. This is all because of you. So you kindly step forward because you're the, you're the cause of all this. <laughs> the Lord's affection for you has triggered such a cosmic explosion in the death of Hiranyakashipu. <clears throat> so no one can pacify Nishringadev's unlimited wrath. It's got to be you, Prahlad. So here we're seeing the special glories of Pallad Maharaj.
And then we go to the situation where after successfully pacifying Lord Nishingadev, Lord Nishingadev, what does he do next? He tempts Prahlad. How can a devotee handle temptation, especially temptation enacted by the Supreme Personality of Godhead? You might be thinking that, look, just living an everyday life in this world is enough temptation. Just getting online, the internet, television, billboards on the road. Uh, that's enough. But now we hear about the Supreme Personality of Godhead tempting his devotee. And how did Lord Shingadev do that? He first presented his own qualifications. Prahlad, you know, it's my pastime to fulfill the desires of everyone. <laughs> Someone who pleases me never has anything more to be unsatisfied about. What would you like, Prahlad? Ask any benediction you'd like. This is a big challenge. And what was Prahlad's response? The first thing he said was, my dear Lord, remember my family background. <laughs> you don't have to do a background check on my family line. You know, they are the most atrocious materialists. As Srila Prabhupada reveals in his Seventh Canon of Purports, Haroni Kashipu is the essence of materialism. He is the epitome. Uh, he's the mm, representative of materialistic life. So we can all see a bit of ourselves in Hiranyakashi Pu. As I often point out in my classes the past week for various places, we shouldn't be so quick to consider Hiranyakashi Pu to be a total freak. He's certainly in a class by himself, but we can see a bit of ourselves in him. And as I pointed out a few days ago in my classes in other venues, the verse from the seventh canto where Hiranyakashipu is highlighted as having untold opulence, untold sense gratification, and yet never satisfied. He's revealing the truth of material indulgence. If there's anyone who had it all, it's Harandikashipu, and yet he's still unsatisfied. That should teach us something about our individual life and our current societies. Hmm. So Prahlad says to Lord Nishingade, I'm coming from such a family with such a <laughs> propensity for unlimited material exploitation and gratification. Why would you want to tempt me? And then Pallad says, actually, you are doing this to me just to demonstrate the qualities of pure bhakti. There's no need for you to understand my devotional fidelity, my attachment to pure devotional service. You're omniscient, you know that. But you want to set the bar, set the standard for the world. And therefore you're testing me, tempting me in this way. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I give the example, which is especially familiar to those in the USA, if you know anything about the legal system. There is a phenomenon called entrapment. Uh, sometimes law enforcement officers become chastised or mm, they're, they're, their cases are thrown out. If the judge sees entrapment, in other words, the law enforcement official, whether FBI, whatever, 
put, really pushed the person to commit the crime. An undercover agent really pushed. I've got some good explosives here. Think about it. Don't, don't you want to use these explosives? Mm. Here, I'll, actually, I can just put them right in your hands right now. Uh, just take, just hold on to them for a while. <laughs> if they push too much, if the law enforcement officials push too much, this is called entrapment. And the judge, depending on what you, which administration the judge is aligned with, <laughs> the judge throws the case out. So here we see Lord Nishigade apparently guilty of entrapment. Prahlad, <laughs> you can ask for whatever you want. Anyone who comes to me is never dissatisfied. I fulfill the desires of everyone. Take any benediction you want. <laughs> this is very intense. Now, as we're going to find out from Brihad Bhagavatamrita, uh, in his further elucidation on this pastime, Sanatan Goswami points out that the Lord was not simply offering material happiness. He was not simply offering some material benediction. He was offering parampadam, vaikuntha. And still Prahlad didn't bite. He didn't accept that. So Sanatan Goswami, I was explaining this yesterday to an audience in Hungary at the Vyasa Puja Festival of His Holiness Shiva Ram Raj. Sanatan Goswami explains that again and again, Puna, Puna, Lord Nishingadev is pushing Prahlad, take it, take a benediction. Not simply material happiness. Okay, you don't want that. Param padam, vaikuntha. <laughs> and again and again, Prahlad would say, no, no. I simply want pure bhakti. Never mind if puna puna again and again, I have to take birth. That's okay, as long as I have an opportunity to render pure service to you. And then as you know, Prahlad describes the nature of a real devotee. He says to Lord Shigadev, I'm not interested in vanik seva, mercantile devotional service. Devotional service done for the sake of getting some material gain. That's not being a real disciple. That's not being a real devotee. I'm not going to be like that. And I know that the real master doesn't give out material benedictions in order to increase his prestige as a master. You're not like that. And I'm also not like a materially motivated servitor. We have no other relationship than master and servant. It'll always be like that. And it always has been like that. This is Prahlad Maharaj's famous soliloquy his presentation of where he's at. Never was there a time when I was not your unmotivated servant and never will there be a time. It's always going to be like this. You are the master, I am the servant. Yes, Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur in his commentaries describes how Pallad Maharaj is obviously in Dasya Prem. His rasa is servant. So Prahlad's sterling example, you'd have to say chintamani example, is what motivated Lord Nishingadev to say, you are the standard for a bhakta. And that's our verse that we began with today. Bhavanti. Purusha loke <clears throat> mud bhaktas twam anuvrataha. Bhavan me kalu <clears throat> bhaktanam sarvesham patirupa drik. Those who follow your example will naturally become my pure devotees. You are the best example of my devotee, and others 
should follow in your footsteps. Mm. Okay, time for some Brihad Bhagavatamrita enhancement and elucidation. <laughs> I hope you all, in addition to your full sets of Srila Prabhupada's books, Srimad Bhagavatam, Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, I hope you also have the three volume set of Brihad Bhagavatamrita, the chief Sanskrit editor, the late Gopi Pranadana Prabhu, a genius. We both became devotees at the same time at the New York Temple, uh, 1972, 1973. And also the impeccable English editing of His Holiness Jayadwaita Maharaj, assisted by His Holiness Keshava Bharti Maharaj. So I wholeheartedly recommend Brihad Bhagavatamrita and there's also the BBT edition of Lagu Bhagavatamrita, Rupa Goswami's smaller accompaniment to Brihad, big Bhagavatam. Lagu Bhagavatamrita is like the science of the avatars. I spoke a lot about it yesterday to the Hungarian audience, how Rupa Goswami classifies the incarnations and appearances of the Lord and says the top three are called Pada Avasta. Those top three are Lord Nishingadev, and then Lord Ramchandra, and then Swayam Bhagavan, Lord Krishna. Each one successively revealing more special qualities than the other. So we're going to go to Lord Shiva. You see, the quest for finding the best devotee started with a saintly personality on the earth planet who then dispatched or passed on the search. In other words, not me, but go see Indra. And then Indra said, not me, go see Brahma. Each one is glorifying the other. Oh, I'm nothing. I don't know what you've heard. You've been brainwashed. It's not me. I'm not a great devotee, but I can tell you someone who is. So beyond earth, the sequence went to Indra. Indra passed the buck. No, I'm not the greatest devotee. Go see Brahma. Brahma said, no, I'm not the greatest devotee. He passed the buck. Go see Shiva. And now Shiva is apparently passing the buck to Mahalakshmi. She is the one. And he's even saying that. Mm, she's always on the chest of the Lord. <laughs> In her supreme form, she's there as Rukmini. But before Narada Muni, because it's Narada Muni who's going through this search, before Narada Muni takes off for Vaikuntha to find the topmost devotee, Mahalakshmi, Lord Shiva pulls him aside, stops him and says, actually, actually there's someone else. Mm. I will whisper in your ear a great secret. You can't tell anyone this. <laughs> What's the problem here? Why is Lord Shiva wanting such secrecy? The problem is that by changing Narumuni's direction, well, actually it's not Mahalakshmi, it's someone else. Lord Shiva realizes that he's risking the wrath of his wife, Parvati. So you see, even in the highest realms of existence, husbands have to have discretion. Uh, even Lord Shiva realized that. I just can't say it out loud because Parvati, my wife, is friends with Mahalakshmi. So if my wife hears that I have kind of demoted Mahalakshmi, in terms of not 
giving her the crown of being the greatest devotee. My wife will be angry with me and she'll not only she'll not only disrespect me, but she will disrespect Narada Muni too. So let's just keep this quiet. Mm. Life is intricate, isn't it? <laughs> So Lord Shiva, whispering in Narada ear, tells him, there's a greater recipient of Lord Krishna's mercy. Greater than Brahma, greater than me, Shiva, greater than Garuda, even greater than Mahalakshmi. That devotee's name is Prahlad. And then Lord Shiva presents various Shastras, pointing out that the devotee, the pure devotee is so dear to the Lord that the Lord considers even his own form, his own mm, opulences to be paltry compared to the glorious pure devotee. He's not even as much attracted to Lakshmi Devi in Vaikuntha. He's not even as much attracted to the imperishable opulences than Sri, that Sri creates in Vaikuntha, as much as he's attracted by his devotee, the pure devotion of his devotee. Even the Lord's own beauty doesn't mean as much to him as the beauty of pure bhakti, which motivates the Lord to come under the control of his devotee. And of course, you especially see that in the topmost portion of the spiritual world in Galoka Vrindavan. So Lord Shiva points out that the Lord considers his own body worthless compared to the value of his pure devotees. Lord's body, Sri Murti, worthless, his Satchitananda form. This is getting very intense, but Lord Shiva's only beginning. He wants to convince us that Prahlad Maharaj's good fortune is so vast, it's inconceivable. Unique amongst Vaishnavs. So again, we're in the aftermath, the days following the celebration of Lord Nishigade's appearance. So it's a great time to focus on the glories of Prahlad in terms of his relationship with the Lord, because the two are always together, Prahlad Nishringa. Hmm. And Lord Shiva is saying, this duo is even more important than Lakshmi and Lord Narayan. Even more important than Lakshmi and Nishringa. Mm -hmm. So Shiva goes on to explain that we've all witnessed what happened to Haranikasipu. Not only I saw, but all the demigods saw, and Lakshmi Devi herself saw. The killing of Hiranyakashipu is not simply about the termination of the demon. It's about the incomparable good fortune of Prahlad. <clears throat> Here you have firsthand evidence you, right before your eyes. <clears throat> We discussed how several times the Lord tried to offer material benedictions, even spiritual benedictions to Prahlad. So Shiva is putting forth that now. It happened again and again, and again and again, Prahlad requested pure devotion, even if that pure devotion would result in birth after birth. So remember, these are the three meanings of puna, puna, Again and again, again and again, Lord Nishingadev tried. 
Again and again, Prahlad requested pure devotion. And Puna Puna, Prahlad said, even if again and again I have to take birth, I don't mind. Just as Mahaprabhu said, Mama Janmani Janmani Sade, Babatad Bhakti Ahoy Tuki Twai. Birth after birth, I don't mind as long as I have a chance for service to your lotus feet. And following in the footsteps of Mahaprabhu, what does Bhaktivinoda Thakur say in one of his songs? Kita Janmaha. I don't mind a birth as an insect as long as it's in the house of a devotee. Is he just speaking poetically or does he really mean this? Srila Prabhupada revealed that Bhakti no Thakur is thinking, if I'm an, a bug or even a dog in the house of a devotee, when some crumbs from the prasad fall on the floor, ah, I'll be able to taste that. Sometimes you wonder, is this for real? Yes, the potency of bhakti is far beyond our estimation and calculation. The potency of pure bhakti. And these greatest devotees know that. And so Prahlad Maharaj is doing extraordinary service by setting the example so that we can see. So then Lord Shiva brings up some interesting case studies. <laughs> in medical school or in business school, there are always case studies. And so Lord Shiva brings forth Bali Maharaj. <clears throat> Why is it that although Bali Maharaj failed in his vows to give what Vamana Dave, what he promised Vamana Dave? As you know, Lord Vamade didn't have anywhere to put his third step. He had covered the whole universe with two steps. And so his third step rested on the head of Bali Maharaj because that's all Bali Maharaj could offer. As a result, though, the Lord becomes a doorman, a guard at Bali's palace, Sutaloka. So what's going on here? Lord Shiva says, it wasn't, this happened not because of Bali Maharaj per se. Because look, he was deficient. He didn't do this, he didn't do that. He failed in this way, he failed in that way. And yet he gets such a result. What's going on? It's because he's the grandson of Prahlad Maharaj. That's the only reason. So then you might say, well, let's defend Bali. No doubt Bali got mercy from his grandfather, Prahlad Maharaj, and therefore Bali was able to attract the mercy of the Supreme Personality Godhead. Hmm. But Sanatana Goswami in his commentary presents that, wait a minute, <laughs> let's bring out Banasura, the great grandson of Prahlad Maharaj. What are you gonna say about that? Banasura got a benediction from Lord Shiva and then tried to attack Lord Shiva. And Banasura made so many offenses toward the Supreme Personality got it and his entourage. Mm. Lord Shiva saying, I couldn't save Banasura, even though he's my devotee. <laughs> the Lord cut off almost all his arms, <laughs> all but four. And the Lord made Banasura Shiva's eternal associate. But this didn't happen because of anything to do with me. This happened because Banasur was the great grandson of Pallad Maharaj. Mm. Only because of Pallad Maharaj's pure bhakti.
did Bali Maharaj get the result he got? Banasura got the result he got all because of Prahlad. The Lord's affection for Prahlad. But Lord Shiva is catching himself. He knows Narada Muni's appetite for hearing this kata is increasing extraordinarily. But Lord Shiva, <laughs> Sanatana Goswami explains, is afraid. Things are getting out of hand. The discussion's becoming too enthusiastic and loud. Parvati might overhear. He's got two concerns, Lord Shiva. That he's thinking, if he, Lord Shiva, continues talking about the glories of Prahlad, he may fall into an ecstatic trance. And number two, if through enthusiasm he speaks too loudly, Parvati might hear what he's saying. And if she becomes annoyed, and if she makes offenses, then there are problems. Mm. So a further point is raised. How could an apparent newcomer to Bhakti surpass even the glories of Lakshmi Devi? Prahlad's an apparent newcomer. He's actually an eternally liberated soul going through the role of a sadhana siddha. Mm. Lakshmi Devi resides eternally on the chest of Narayan. How could it be that Prahlad's glory surpasses her? Prahlad's glory surpasses her. The Lord was worried that when devotees hear about Lord Brahma giving benedictions to Hrindakashipu that made him so powerful, their confidence in bhakti and devotional service would become weak. Like, what's the use? I mean, here we are. Well, we're trying to chant our rounds and follow the four principles and go to the temple once a week. And look what Brahma gives to her Anikashipu. He practically made him immortal. So weak devotees are very quick to lose their confidence. Oh, look at this situation. Look at that situation. How can Krishna let that happen to me? All oh, the pandemic, the horrors of it, the suffering people are going through, what medical staff is going through. Oh, where is God? Uh, why is this happening? As aspiring devotees were so easily blown off course by some upheaval in the material world. And those upheavals are... Uh, substantial. But Pallad's glory is that even amidst torture and intimidation, like never before seen, he still remained fixed in remembering the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So the Lord wanted that example to be paramount. Otherwise, someone needs to turn their microphone off. <laughs> Otherwise, neophyte devotees would become mm, intimidated. Like, this is not fair. A demon gets all these material benedictions. <clears throat> of course, if I had those material benedictions, I would simply and certainly use them all in Krishna's service. But <laughs> just look at what Hiranyakashipu got. And look what Prahlad gets. He gets tortured. <laughs> so right after the execution of Hiranyakashipu, the Lord blesses Prahlad to be greater than all devotees, past, present, and future. In other words, the Lord is saying, Bhaktas, devotees, look at this. Watch this. Instead of becoming distracted by Hiranyakashipu's power and opulence, look at what I'm going to do for my devotee, Prahlad. Mm. 
In this way, Prahlad becomes the greatest devotee and otherwise that's not possible. <clears throat> Another point, how could it be that Prahlad Maharaj surpasses such extraordinary associates of the Lord like Lakshmi Devi? Sanatana Goswami explains that these mm, major members of the Lord's entourage, like Lakshmi Devi, they've undergone no tribulations in order to attain their status. Whereas the so-called the apparent new devotees. Prahlad is apparently a new devotee through sadhana, but actually he's eternally liberated, but he went through the ordeals of a sadhaka. So these so-called new devotees have sacrificed so much in terms of comforts and securities just to gain pure devotional service. So therefore, the Lord is especially grateful. As far as the eternal entourage like Lakshmi Devi, they're ever established naturally in unswerving devotional service. But they didn't go through any ordeals. And so Prahlad is magnified because he went through it as an example for us all. He took greater risks. The others had no risk. <laughs> They're just eternal associates in Vaikuntha. But Prahlad is going through the risk of practicing bhakti in the material world, showing us that the more we surrender, the more we can understand Krishna and be blessed by him. Another reason given for Prahlad's greatness, even though he's not like Lakshmi Devi held always to the chest of the Lord, he's, or you say there's Brahma, there's Indra, what to speak of Shiva himself. But you see, Brihad Bhagavatamrita explains that the demigods are often able to have the darshan, the audience, of Lord Vishnu, whereas Prahlad associates with the Lord mainly by remembering him. He's demonstrating the perfection of smadana, one of the nine processes of devotional service, remembering the Lord, no matter what the circumstance. Later, I'll just give you a premonition because in our next class, which will be for the Toako uh, devotee community next weekend, but I'm sure you're able to tune in for that. The next class, I'm going to deal with refutations by Prahlad. He's gonna refute everything that Lord Shiva tells Narada Muni because Narada Muni is gonna come running for Prahlad. He's gonna forget all about searching out Lakshmi Devi and come running for Prahlad. And Prahlad's going to refute all the statements. And one of the things Prahlad's going to say is, you say that I had a chance to see the Lord, but that's only momentary. I can only associate with him by remembering. Mm -hmm. Of course, <laughs> you can associate with the Supreme Personality God by any of the nine processes of devotional service. But Prahlad, out of humility, is downgrading himself like that. Who am I? <laughs> I get a glimpse of the Supreme Lord and you make such a big deal out of it. All I can do is remember him as if there's something deficient about remembering the Supreme Lord and getting his darshan that way. Hmm. So now Narada Muni advises, excuse me, now Lord Shiva advises Narada Muni. <clears throat> Tadgatwa sutale shigrang vardayit 
Twasi sam ganai Paradam swayam ashlesha Mar ashlesha valimbade Go quickly to Sutala. Offer Prahlad your countless blessings. Embrace him and tell him, I, Lord Shiva, embrace him again and again. So why should Narada Muni go find Prahlad on the planet Sutala, which is the third of the lower planetary systems? You see, this planet is ruled by Bali Maharaj, as we discussed. And during the whole pastime of Bali Maharaj and Lord Vamana, at the conclusion, the Lord invited Prahlad, visit Sutala Loka. I'll be there for some time. <laughs> As Bali Maharaj is dormant, so you can visit me there. So that's why Lord Shiva is telling Narada Muni, go quickly to Sutala. There you'll find Prahlad. Offer your countless blessings. Embrace him and tell him, I embrace him again and again. But Lord Shiva also issues a warning. And uh, it's going to turn out that Narada Muni is not able to follow the warning. Lord Shiva tells him, Kalad will never tolerate your bowing down to him. He'll never tolerate your praising him. So if you want to spoil the whole encounter, then you do that. You bow down and you praise him. Please don't neglect this reality. <clears throat> so what does Narada Muni do? Now remember, these are extraordinary events because Narada Muni is the Diksha Guru of Pallad Maharaj. Briha Bhagavatam is just on an ecstatic platform. <laughs> don't try to follow this example <laughs> of expecting your Diksha Guru to come and worship you. <laughs> But this is Brihad Bhagavatamrita. You're dealing with the most elevated souls. And Prahlad is not going to take the situation in that way. He's not going to take it from Narada Muni. Mm. So at once, Narada Muni, eager to see Prahlad in person, takes off for Sutala. He's traveling in the mind just by desiring, I want to go to Sutala. He's there. Mm. And Prahlad's in meditation on the Supreme Personality of Godhead. As soon as he is able to come out of his meditative trance, he tries to offer his obeisances to Narada Muni because that's his guru. He, with great effort, tries to Give a seat to Narada Muni. And then he begins puja, as to be expected, when one's guru shows up. <laughs> but Narada Muni, overwhelmed with what he's heard from Lord Shiva, refuses to accept the puja. <laughs> he's crying tears of joy, and he's trying to embrace Pallad. And meanwhile, Prahlad is trying to do puja <laughs> and trying to make sure his guru is seated. So what a scene. <laughs> Prahlad has water brought to wash Narada's feet and has all the paraphernalia for full worship, but Narada has stopped him. Narada just wants to embrace him. <laughs> and then Narada Muni begins to speak. Now, after so long, I've finally seen you. You are the true receiver of Krishna's full mercy. Mm. Now my hunt for the best devotee has reached its conclusion. You've been a pure devotee since you were a child. And the spontaneous love that you have for the Lord has never, ever been seen before. Mm -hmm. You've overcome so many obstacles because of your pure bhakti. 
your father committed thousands of outrages against you. Actually, Shil Prabhupada said something very interesting about Karanikashipu's mistreatment of Prahlad. His efforts to even kill him, not simply torture him, but kill him. Shil Prabhupada explained that Prahlad thought that his father was just playing with him. This is how innocent and pure hearted is Prahlad. But there's no doubt the father committed grievous, the most heinous atrocities against Prahlad. Not only that, Narada Muni says, not only did you withstand the torture from your father, but you converted so many of your schoolmates from demoniac families into Vaishnavs. So how great are your glories? <clears throat> And then Narumuni refers to Prahlad Maharaj's ecstatic, his ecstasies in pure love of Krishna. You, you're so absorbed, you just forget your own existence. You sing and dance like a madman, celebrating the glories of the Lord. You're calling out the holy names loudly. Your whole body is trembling. Through this ecstatic devotional service, you deliver all the worlds from the cycle of repeated birth and death. In the Bhagavatam, Pallad Maharaj, in his refusing to take benedictions from Lord Dasrini 8, talks about something called the samsara bija, the seed of material existence. He says, because we conditioned souls, we living entities suffering under the influence of Maya have this samsara bija, this seed of revolving in the material world because of seeking material fulfillment. That's the samsara bija, the root cause, the seed. Because we have all this, uh, therefore we demonstrate such behavior and qualities that get us into such big trouble, trying to enjoy matter to the fullest, trying to control matter. It's all because of that samsara bija, that seed of seeking fulfillment in the cycle of repeated birth and death. So Prahlad in the Bhagavatam says, my dear Lord Nishingade, You've sent me into this world to demonstrate the qualities of a pure devotee. You're not trying to trick me. You're not trying to overpower me with temptation. You want the world to see the example of pure bhakti. That's why you sent me into this world. Since that's the case, let me clarify. Let me emphasize that I am eternally the servant and you are eternally the master. We have no other relationship than this. But if I must ask for something, let me ask for this, that within the core of my heart, there'll be no material desires. Mm. I just want exclusive pure devotion to you. Mm. So we've heard about Lord Shiva's reciting the glories of Prahlad's ecstatic hearing and chanting and dancing. And now Lord Shiva is going to refer to the scene of the killing of Rundikashipu. It took place on the shore of the ocean. And Lord Shiva says, remember Prahlad, what just happened? Lord Nishingade picked you up because you were offering prostrated obeisances on the ground. He picked you up, placed you on his lap and started caressing you like a mother. And in the process of his treating you in this way, he's ignoring Brahma, Shiva, Lakshmi Devi, what to speak of other demigods offering prayers. Mm. 
So in the Shastra, various details about Lord Nisringa's affectionate treatment of Pallad are given. It's described that Lord Nisringa would have Pallad on his lap and would rock him back and forth, patting him with his lotus Nisringa hand embracing Prahlad repeatedly, just like a mother embraces her child. The demigods are, are all standing back. They're just awestruck. They're too afraid to come close and they're just watching all this. <clears throat> Lord, Shiva, Lord Shiva even points out that not only was the Lord rocking Prahlad like a child and embracing him and patting him on the head, but <clears throat> licking his whole body with affection, just like a lioness does to her cub. So here you have two apparently incompatible dealings of Lord Nishigani, his unlimited anger. He's the supreme horror movie. Everything has to be there, as I often point out in the supreme absolute truth. The love supreme, the ultimate loving dealings, and also the ultimate horror dealings. So Lord Nishigani, for persons of Hiranyakashipu's commitment, he is the ultimate horror movie. At the same time, for his devotees, like Prahlad, he's the most affectionate. So how to combine these two? How to <clears throat> comprehend the simultaneous existence of these two? This is what makes Lord Nishingadev so inconceivable. We spoke about how Lord Nishigadev offered Prahlad the Parampadam. In other words, you can be my eternal associate in Vaikuntha. But Prahlad just wanted to go on honing and purifying his bhakti, no matter how many lifetimes it would take. And he's also concerned about others. What about the others? I've got no problems. I'm perfectly established at the Lord's lotus feet, but what about the countless conditioned souls rotting in this world? So you may recall after Prahlad requested, I only want no material desires. Lord Nishringadev said, this is what you can do. I want you to be a chief executive until the end of the reign of the present Manu. And that way you can do good for all the living entities. I want you to follow all the Vedic formulas for good karma, follow all the rituals, just to set an example for the common person. But I, we all know that you are a pure bhakta you're far beyond the domain of Vedic rituals, good karma, and all that. <clears throat> because you might say, and Sanatana Goswami points this out, you might say, well, wait a minute. Here we have Prahlad Maharaj refusing to accept the Parampadam, eternal association with the Lord in Vaikuntha. And now he's accepting a mundane kingdom in the material world, but he's not accepting that post for his own gratification in the slightest. He's accepting that post as service. He wants to free the people of this world from their distress. He's not worried about being overwhelmed by politics, being polluted by politics. He has full confidence in his relationship with the Supreme Lord. And he knows 
that his unbroken meditation on the Supreme Lord will carry him through. <clears throat> so this discussion with Narada Muni ends with Narada Muni telling Prahlad, the Lord has been conquered not only by you, by other devotees too. In other words, this is the glory of bhakti when executed on the highest platform. Narada Muni says, from now on, I intend to stay here permanently with you. Because in this way, I'll be able to overcome the curses of Daksha and others. Remember Daksha cursed Narada Muni that he couldn't stay in one place. And also in the fourth canto, you read about Jara, old age personified, cursing Narada Muni because he wouldn't marry her. Who wants to marry old age personified, who's the daughter of time. But because Narada Muni refused, she cursed him. You can't stay in one place ever. So both times, same curse, and both are beneficial for Narada Muni's service because he's always on the move. Remember Srila Prabhupada's statement in Sixth Cano that he's also been cursed by some of the parents of his devotees that, and they curse him. Just keep moving, <laughs> keep up in the air. <laughs> Don't have any resting place. You've attracted so many of our sons and daughters. We curse you. So Prabhupada says, I've been cursed. And he said, I'd like to pass that curse down on some of my disciples, that they can't stay in one place. They got to keep moving. In this way, uh, Lord Chaitanya's mission, bhakti spreads all over the whole world. So now, Prahlad has heard enough. He can't tolerate hearing his own praise. But we love to hear being praised. Have you ever had the experience of walking past a room where someone is speaking nicely of you to someone else and you overhear it? Oh, it is so sweet, we think. So ambrosial. <laughs> but here, a real devotee, Pallad Maharaj, can't tolerate hearing his own praise. He's embarrassed, especially Narayana is his guru. So he bows down before Narada Muni and then in a quiet voice begins actually to refute what Narada Muni has said, but he does it very respectfully because actually he's a disciple. <laughs> and again, remember, these are ecstatic high level dealings, not recommended. It's not recommended you imitate this <laughs> in the guru disciple relationship. Mm. So in our next class, for the Tawako community, we will focus on Sri Pallad's rebuttal of everything that Lord Shiva and Narada Muni have said. And Sri Pallad's going to pass the buck onto someone else. You wanna find a real devotee, Narada Muni? Go talk to that one, it's not me. <laughs> All right, we'll stop here and ask if there are any questions. How will that happen? We'll rely on Madhupati Das or someone to please arrange how there can be questions. How do you do this? Hare Krishna, dear Maharaj. Uh, this is Anandini Lalita. Thank you so much for your class. I have a question about Prahlad Maharaj being liberated soul. Uh, we know that we should not put those devotees on a pedestal and think that we can never achieve that level of devotion. But at the same time, my mind uh, take that doubt pretty seriously how, well, that's a pastime of the Lord and it's all arranged. And therefore, uh, Prahlad Maharaj could do that all. But I'm Nitya Badha and, you know, I don't have that mercy. So how can I have hope and strive for that sort of unflinching devotion and 
and concern for other souls like Prahlad Maharaj, how can I ever achieve that sincerely? I can pretend and play and think that like, I'm like this, but is it even possible? So I have this doubt when, uh, when you mentioned that he is eternal liberated soul and this is all pastime. Could you please? But although he's eternally liberated soul, he's demonstrating the process of a sadhaka. That's my point. In that way, the Bhagavatam purpose tell you he's a mixed devotee in terms of part nitya siddha and part sadhana siddha, meaning he's eternally an associate, but he's going through the whole ordeals that a up and coming devotee goes through. Can I then so further us? That's very important. So it's not a question of our feeling, oh, impossible, and I'm just a fake. What's the point in my just playing? Everyone knows where I'm at. Uh, it's a, the point is to apply the process of bhakti day in and day out. Bhakti is a lifetime career. It's not something just for a few years. And if you take it as a lifetime career, you will see major transformation and many persons will be affected by your devotional service. Thank you for the reminder, very important one. Another question, anyone? There's a question in the chat. Okay. <clears throat> yes. Maharaj, <clears throat> thank you very much for this wonderful class and the pastime of Prahlad Narsingadeva and from Briyad Bhagavatamrita. I was just at the end, the Lord's desire where the uh, Lord is sending uh, Prahlad Maharaj to Sutala Loka. Now, uh, Prahlad Maharaj is an eternally liberated soul. I don't know, somebody might say, oh, why uh, uh, I land up into Sutala Loka, a lower planetary system then going back to Godhead. Um, how would you? The Supreme Lord had service for him to do there. And remember, Bali Maharaj is also there. That's Prahlad's grandson. Yeah. And in Bhagavatam, you'll read that the Lord told Prahlad Maharaj, do these services in the material world, and then at the end, you'll go back to Vaikuntha. So yes. there were purposes that the Supreme Lord had in mind for Pallad Maharaj, which Pallad Maharaj was happy to take on his head, especially because he says, I don't want to go back to Vaikuntha without taking everyone with me. Yeah. Okay. Very good question. Shimesha Prabhu, we got a question. You can unmute yourself and ask questions. You can also turn your video if you want. Yes, I can. So, hey, Krishna Maharaj, thank you so much for having uh, a wonderful lecture and the deep realizations and understandings of Prahlad Maharaj and uh, connecting that to the Prahlad Bhagavad Um I just have a question um, on, uh, you know, that the Gopa Kumar, was the guru instructed the Gopa Kumar Later, Gopakumar realized that that is Krishna himself came as a good and instructed to chant the mantra, Gopal mantra. And then uh, we see that uh, in the case of Prahlad Maharaj, Narada Muni is actually instructing that the same process of bhakti. And how that we can apply or what or we can compare as we are here in this Kali Yuga, that uh, is there any way that the guru is actually instructing us or Shiksha guru or Shiksha guru or they are uh, the representatives of the Lord or is that the case that uh, we should uh, uh, consider them as such a, such a high spirit of that they are the representatives of the Lord um, that just, just wanted to uh, get a question. The last two sentences were very unclear. If you could repeat that. Yes, Maharaj. Okay. So the, we also have, we are also practicing, we are also trying to practice our sadhana, sadhanas. We are trying to go beyond 
the sadhana bhakti so how we should see that uh, the diksha guru or shiksha guru or uh, the representatives of the lord so we can can we compare that say uh, gopal kumar got an instruction from uh, shri krishna himself and prahlad maharaj got narada so likes that so what is our opportunity of what uh, you know we are we need to seek for Yasya Prasada, Bhagavad Prasada, Yasya Prasada, Nagati Katopi. That's the eternal truth. By pleasing the spiritual master, all success is there. By displeasing the guru, all havoc is there. We're entitled to extraordinary mercy because we're following in disciplic succession. We're entitled to extraordinary mercy coming down from Shila Prabhupada, from the Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasi Thakur, Shila Bhakti No Thakur, Gorka Shura Maharaj, on back. And of course, we have our current link to this extraordinary line. So the same truth is always there. It's not changed by circumstance. If we have a genuine guru who is following in parampara, then we try to please that guru. The truth that Bhaktivinoda Thakur pointed out, Krishna say tomar, Krishna dite par. Krishna, you're the property of your devotee. Therefore, I'm running after the devotee shouting Krishna, Krishna. In other words, I'm not running after Krishna directly. I'm running after the devotee shouting Krishna, Krishna, because... Krishna is the property of his devotee. And as Narada Muni was rejoicing that Krishna, the Lord is conquered by the devotee. He's conquered by us, conquered by us. <laughs> so we should all remember that point. If some or other we can please Srila Prabhupada and his representatives, our life is successful. It's not that there's something available in the time or the situation of Brihad Bhagavatamrita that's not available to us now. The ultimate guru is Krishna. <laughs> he gives everyone the best, but we have to be able to see that despite differing circumstances. Krishna never cheats his devotee, never shortchanges his devotee. Hare Krishna. We miss Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Okay. Yeah. We'll see you back, Maharaj. Yes. Anyone else? Otherwise, I'll take leave, Thank please. You. Thank you so much, Maharaj. It was very wonderful. All right. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Madhupat Prabhu. I'm sorry. Uh, I, I was on mute. <clears throat> Is Maharaj around? I think Maharaj logged out. Uh, Prabhu, I'll, yeah. Seven is top Prabhu. We'll do five minutes drama also. So an hour. Yeah, so there is also a virtual drama. So let's uh, is uh, seven is Prabhu ready? Hare Krishna. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. He's ready. So, uh, Hare Krishna, everybody. So, in the short span of time today, we try to do a uh, social distancing based drama. So, we instead of doing it live, which would have been cumbersome with all the props running around this and that. So, what we did is we, as a family, shot the clips and made a drama and edited it today itself uh, in the afternoon. So I'm going to share the screen and see if we can Mama. make it work. Mama. I'm going to mute at the same time. Mama. One second. Uh, let's see. 
So can everybody uh, see my screen? Yes. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Everybody can still see? I am hidden in the yes. My brother is hidden in No. My brother was hidden in Vishnu came as Vada and killed him. I hate Vishnu. Now I will meditate on Brahma to get a boon. So I will be immortal. And I will be the ruler of the entire universe. Only the text is coming. And on the left side, there's a Lord Amma. I am very pleased with your meditation. Ask what you desire. Prabhuji, only audio is coming. No video was coming? No video, Prabhuji. No. Only we just see. No video, yeah. Once upon a time. And your left side also, I think okay, there's something right. blocked. So you're not sharing your uh, desktop. You're sharing only application. And it's only showing the first uh, bits for some reason. Okay, so... Um, uh, I don't know probably how to do this. Uh, so what do I do now? We see the gray area, Prabhuji. There is other uh, superimposing application on the left side. We see gray area for that. Okay, so that's just my uh, that's just my this thing. One second, let me stop my video. So is that better? Yeah, we can see on the rightmost side. So bring that to the full screen. Yeah. Can you see the full screen now? I am hidden in Kashyap. Yeah. My brother is hidden. Yeah. Still. Uh, only text is showing. Text is coming. It's not moving forward, Prabhuji. So let me just make this bigger. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Sorry, sorry, sorry. In the first time I'm trying. Uh, okay, optimize for this. Share computers now. Okay, is this better? Yeah, we can see it now. Let's play. I am hidden Nikashipu. My brother is hidden Yak. Can you see? No. Yep. My brother was hidden Yak. Vishnu came as Vada and killed him. I hate Vishnu. Now I will meditate on Brahma to get a boon. So I will be immortal. And I will be the ruler of the entire universe. Hrane Kashipu. I am your Lord Brahma. I am very pleased with your meditation. Ask what you desire. I desire to be immortal. I want to be the king of the whole universe by being immortal. I cannot make you immortal because even I am not immortal. So then I ask for no beast or any person or any other species you created can kill me. No one can kill me on land, water, or air. Nobody can kill me with any weapon. Nobody can kill me at day or night. Tathastu. So be it. I am the king of the universe. I am sitting on Indra's throne. Now my only desire is that my son Prahlad will grow big and strong and a great demon like me. For this reason, 
I have instructed his teachers to give them all the education he needs to become a great demon king. So my dear brother, Vishnu. what have you learned in school? I have learned that Vishnu is the supreme personality of Godhead. We should all worship him. What? Is this what they're teaching you? Guards, take him and teach him a lesson. <laughs> My dear king, we have tried everything to divert Prahlad's attention. We threw him from the cliff. We also uh, beat him with a hunter. We brought an elephant too. But he is not changing. He is still chanting the name of Vishnu. What should we do? What? Bring him to me. My dear king, here is Prahlad. Oh, <laughs> 